Here we are with the old 1950T this morning. What you got going here, Tom? Well, we're gonna put the old Wally on the auger that it hasn't been on before. We, it's a thousand RPM auger. We're gonna change the uh, power takeoff shaft here. Yeah, so on some of the tractors that had both 540 and 1000 RPM, some of the later ones, they had separate shafts, right? Just that came well, out of the back, tractors the International just, Harvesters. You just took them up. But this one, you actually have to put a different shaft in, right? Yeah. And it's been a couple days since we've done this. We haven't shifted the gears for a while. It's actually pretty simple. Like most of what Oliver did, they were ahead of their time at the day. I had it so you could have two speed power takeoff. There come out the 540. Now we're going to shift the gear. And there's the little slifter slide is down underneath there. I don't know whether you got Okay. You can see it. It shifts really good. Oh, it just slides back and forth. It just slides back and forth. Well, what does that actually, that just changes the gear. That changes the in inside there, yes, where we can't see it. Granddad gets a little nervous. We have had some issues, but I think we got those all solved. Oh, have we torn up the insides? We've had to take the whole apparatus off, but we got her figured out now. Okay, I think we're good. Gosh, we should have went ahead and got that high dollar reducer downer, I guess. That uh, auger's got a $3,000 gearbox on it that lets you use a 1,000 RPM power takeoff. This new one that we got laying on the truck over there, we decided to stay at 540 on it and save the $3,000. I hope that was a good choice. I think it will be. So what's the plan today? You guys look like you're loafing. This is not like corn harvest when you're, well, whenever we're still you cut beans, you have to wait till the, the dew goes off of the morning for where the beans will cut good. Okay. So we get to loaf about 10 o'clock when it's a lot of heavy dew. Don't have to do anything <laughs> except get ready. Right here at the house or somewhere else? No, we got another farm rented over. Okay about four or five miles west of here. We're going over on the Little Wabash River this morning. Won't be in it, but we'll be above it on a bluff. Well, let's see if it works. And that's all there is to it? That's all there are to it. <laughs> What'd you say? I hope it works, because we have had trouble when we shifted gears on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that line was coming. Yeah. Ah, now this uh, this is unique probably to an Oliver. The brake or the clutch or whatever that actually stops the shaft when it's disengaged doesn't actually stop it. They've fixed that and fixed that and fixed that. It just does not work well on this tractor. It will stop when there's a load on it though. So these are persimmons, right? Persimmons. You eat the things? Oh yeah. So this is a persimmon seed here you're, uh, you're washing here. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing now? I'm going to look inside and see if it's a knife, fork, or a spoon. Sometimes they open up pretty easy, sometimes they don't. And this here is a knife. Okay, it indeed, indeed does look like a knife, doesn't it? Well, I heard if it's a spoon, it's supposed to be... Have a lot of... Well, a spoon or a shovel, same thing, but a lot of snow. I had a couple the other day that had spoons in them or shovels. Like, there it is. And that's more of a, more of a spoon, I think. Cats is gonna get their breakfast. Mom's always feeding somebody. Don't know if we've seen my mom on tractor time with Tim before. You got a few cats here, don't you, Mom? Oh, just a few. I don't know. We're missing one here. This is the first time we've had cats for a while, this many. So, uh, oh, they're fun to watch of a morning. Yeah. Them and Molly. Molly loves them so much. They're getting their morning snack here. So they're not underfoot. <laughs> Last tractor to go on the farm, right? Uh, unless it croaks, <laughs> which you never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking more like a spoon, isn't it? Everybody's been finding spoons I've been seeing on Facebook. So Spoon scoop of snow. Oh. Knives means the wind will cut like a knife. The fork is a sign of a mild winter because the snow goes through your fork. Oh, well, it's not going to be a mild winter. Well, you know what? I would say that's probably about as accurate as most of the weathermen on TV. We'll actually honestly say the coat on the dog will rule. Some people say the, the coat on the horses. You got horses, right, Terry? 
mules. Yeah, they're getting heavy coated already. The weather, according to friends of Tractor Time with Tim. Where are you going? Duck down there where the other and bit the big one. Oh, the, oh, auger got tarred. It decided to lay down? It laid down on us. Uh -huh. Just got plum tarred. Just real revolting development. Well, well, it's sitting over if you want to go look at it. So here is the auger that fell over. Somehow I'm not sure the uh, actual auger that's in the, inside that pipe is going to work very well now. It seems to have had a little bend to it. So this thing's basically junk. There's really not much you can do to fix it. I can't say I'm real happy about it. I kind of like that ogre. So that's that big gearbox to let them run 1,000 RPM. That's, that's, that's a $3,000 piece of equipment. Just that one gearbox. Yeah, and yeah. it will also let you reverse it so that you can put for a clean out procedure. See the front of it? It's got different places you can stick the shaft in it. See, I'd like to have a reversible gearbox on my post hole digger. I bet you would. They but I don't need a 100 horse version. Well, that one probably be about all your little Johnny'd want to pick up, too. Yeah. <laughs> kind of heavy. I think we're on the move. So they've rented a farm off a former a farmer and he has some grain bins on his property. So that's the reason to use augers instead of a grain leg like we talked about in some of the last videos. Um, this auger then is transportable and we can drive it to that neighbor's farm and fill up his grain bins. I don't know how much of that's done anymore. A lot of these grain bins are fairly small, so it takes a lot of time to, to use them and fill them. I think in this case he's got, I believe I can see two grain bins. Those grain bins are probably 6,000 bushel bins, something like that. That this one's one. full. This one's not much above the door here. Yep. There we go. And this is where the auger fell over, so that's why we're doing all this re redoing it here. What you doing up there? Well, I'm getting ready to open up the lid. Got a strap on these, this, both sides. Raise her up. Push her over. That's the way it works on this bin anyway. A lot of them are different. How many houses can you see from there? <laughs> Nine. We can use our headsets, our Bluetooth headsets for our phones. If I'm up on top of the bin, I can call Dad down here when that keeps us from having to yell over the tractor where we need to move a little bit. Now this old tractor doesn't have much for hydraulics, so he revs it all the way up to uh, raise the auger. 1950T had 105 horsepower. Now there was another 1950 before this tractor and actually was sold at the same time that had a Detroit diesel engine in it. This one has a 310 engine in it. The same block is used by a gas engine. So it's probably not really sturdy enough for a lot of the diesel applications. It sure has a lot of low end torque and it sounds beautiful. This was a 1967 model. A lot of high end features for its day. It just wasn't quite as reliable as uh, the Deer, the 4020s, and that series there, and that was kind of its competition. It is totally different to see them talking on the phone to each other rather than uh, yelling and waving and, and all that. Just a little bit of movement by the tractor moves that into that auger a long way. This is the kind of stuff you don't see on a lot of farming videos because, well, it might be considered kind of dull, I guess. Well, some farmers don't have to do these particular things, but there's always set up this kind of stuff that has to be done before you can actually do the, the glamorous type work. If any of it's glamorous, I guess. It seems more exciting to see the big combine run, I suppose. See, not only does he want the auger positioned just perfectly, he also wants the tractor straight with the auger when he's done. And the reason for that is he wants that PTO shaft running fairly straight. You don't want to put a crook in that PTO shaft, force those universal joints into you know, more stress than what they already need. So there, you know, it's a little more than just, just making sure the, the pipe gets into the hole. I think we told you in another video that they actually had two of these augers. One of them just blew over this week. And so they're using the other one here. And if we get a chance, we'll show you. They bought a new one yesterday. They loaded it on their flatbed semi-trailer. So it's gotta be assembled and they don't have time to assemble it. So they'll probably make do with one auger at least until a rain or, or some other situation comes along and it gives them time to, to assemble that new auger. Now Terry will be lowering this hopper out here. That part is manually controlled with the crank. The interesting thing is when they let this down the auger up at the top moves so that's part of the 
Tom's got a pushing job for us now. He says he's going to push the wagon out. What's the wagon for? Hayride. Hayride? Yeah, church hayride. Tomorrow night, Sunday evening. We got any hay? Got straw. Well, that's you what we need. You use hay for a hayride. You use straw for a hayride. <laughs> Why don't they call it a straw ride? <laughs> straw ride. It's always been a straw ride ever since I've been nigh on for... Hay's itchy. Nehi. Nobody would want a hay for a hayride with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think they did want hay for a hayride. But What's what? the name of this wagon? This one is the 10 ton wagon. Is this the big wagon? This is the big wagon. The big wagon, that's the big what it wagon. is. That's right. We had four wagons when we were kids, right, Tom? Yep, we did have four wagons. We had the Oliver wagon. Yes, sir. The big wagon. The uh, official wagon. And what was the red one? The red one was the international. Yeah, the one in the back is the big wagon. We're going to roll. Hammer down. Yeah! You pretty good driver, Randall? I don't really know which way I'm supposed to go with it. You should have had a little better planning. Yeah. This is a big wagon. And it, it had the newest chassis of any of our wagon, and it was yes. a heavier duty chassis. That's why it was called the big wagon. Now, what I didn't understand was the sideboards were shorter than two or three of our other wagons. Well, that's because they didn't go ahead and fix the fancy sideboards that they had on the other And wagon. I just didn't understand how they could call it the big wagon when it didn't look as big as the other wagons. Yeah. yeah. Uh -oh. I'm going to have to push. Okay, here we go. We got him out of Now, all the oil is because it's got a hoist under it. It's a dump bed. It looks to me like the big wagon needs a little bit of cleanup before hayride time. That's why we're getting it now. Hey, there's not a whole lot of... It's not too bad. No. I assume we'll take the end gate out and that'll be about it, right? No, we don't even take it out. Oh, you leave the end gate Leave in. the end gate in. Helps hold the sides together and everybody else together. This, the floor on this wagon is the original floor off the old Johnson wagon. The bed. And I don't know if I That's remember this. That's the one that passed you when it was going down the road. It pulled okay. the bed. I don't think, I think that was before That's my time. They replaced it. But what I was going to show was, was how these sideboards are made. Very, very similar. See, this was the same technique I used on my trailer. That's where I got it from. See how it's got a two by two there. Now they used a solid rod across there, which probably makes a lot of sense where I used a chain. But the same thing on the inside there. That's where I got the idea, guys. We use this wagon and all the wagons actually to hold seed, seed beans and seed wheat, because at that time you were able to save your own seed. So we would uh, take the wagon out and just fill it one time in the fall and then, or the, the summer in the case of wheat. And then we'd clean that seed and bag it. Here's the new auger. Now this is just like the auger we were just looking at, right? But it's just now, a different color? This is a wheat heart instead of a Westfield. The red is all the same as what's yellow on the other one. Okay. And the undercarriage, the lift system, is what's different between this one and the Westfield. Oh, so it, uh, it is a little bit different. The, the lift is a scissor type lift instead of the double A arm. Okay. It's supposed to take a 100 pound less oil pressure to raise it, hydraulic pressure. Okay, well that'll be good with the old track. Yeah, I, and it, this one has a wider stance. It's adjustable width. Okay. Stance, so, so it will hopefully be more stable and not have the same problem the other one did. Yeah. But the main reason that we got this one instead of a Westfield is because it's it was available. Yeah. Before three weeks. You got You so. got to get. You got to get it now. This is when you need it. Okay. So what are we going to do here this morning? We're going to back this trailer over out of the way and unhook it and put the hopper bottom on so we can haul beans. Now, Christy, I know you would do anything you could just to keep from backing a, a regular trailer. These guys aren't scared at all of just backing their tractor trailer. We're kind of on the other end of the activity today than we were in some of the corn harvest. In the corn harvest, you saw us go to the combine. We were filling up the fuel and doing some of the greasing and things like that. Well, that's happening right now. My dad and Terry are both over at the combine. This is kind of the other half of what has to go on. They had that rain and wind that caused the auger to blow over, and that also gave them a few days to uh, be able to get this new auger. Maybe they'll get another rain soon and they can assemble it. That jack is made almost identically to our trailer jack. Actually looks like it cranks faster than ours. That'll be a two-speed jack. So notice he's cranking really hard and then he pushes in, that's shifting gears. And then it cranks easy, but it doesn't crank up as fast. Our jack on our trailer doesn't have the two-speed. It's only got a single speed. Can you hear the air underneath there? The leveling valves are letting air out of the bag since we took weight off. Okay. To keep it at the right height. Okay. It takes less pressure after you take your trailer weight off of it. That says as soon as it starts to whistle that you've got it high enough because after it starts to let back down, you'll be too high or you have okay. your trailer too high. 
you know, those kind of things are obvious to the guys that are in the industry, but somebody who doesn't do that, you just, you don't know those little tricks. It takes you a while to learn them. Do we have anything to unhook in here, or do you do that automatic? Ah. Hand it in the handle for it. There we go. Now, they used to run grease on, on top of the fifth wheel here. Now they run these... Uh, take you back and show you in between the hoppers. I always thought this was a unique thing. So here we are in between the hoppers. So we gotta slide the fifth wheel on the slide it forward, forward. here so we can get as much weight up on the front axle as you can. Up to 12,000 pounds but you still want to be long enough to keep your length to be able to haul 80. That's all in that bridge law. It's gotta be a certain length from one to five, axle one to axle five, and another length from axle two to axle five. So that determines you gotta have the right length of tractor to, and then the right length of trailer to be able to bridge 80,000. We had to have it slip back that, to get the clearance underneath on the low boy to keep it from getting the fenders. So how do we do that? Well, I've got a switch up here. This is an air slide. Okay. There's an air cylinder, that gray line around back here. Okay. And when I flip the switch, I may have to shake it a little bit. We gotta line the pin up with this hole. Okay. You see where it was yeah. sitting before? Yeah. So he's, he may have to shake the tractor a little bit. Okay, the switch worked. Now he's back in the tractor up. He's gonna he's gonna switch it out. And now it's spring loaded. Now when he backs on up, it should go right in there. There it goes. Perfect. Very nice, that was easy. It's great when it works. I guess when it doesn't work, it's when it gets rusty in there, if it hasn't slid recently. Right, before we got the water trailer and yeah. the low boy, we weren't moving it on dads very much. And had a place go bad on the cylinder that it wouldn't seal air okay. from sitting in one place too long. So that's an air-driven cylinder. Right. Okay. So now we air up the suspension on the trailer and away we go. You can see the frame of the trailer rising now. I guess we're gonna get a little lean now, don't we? What were you doing with this thing, Randall? We were spreading cereal rye for cover crop. You put it on put on, on the corn stalks. Put it on there. the corn stalks that we shelled a week ago or a little better. You're gonna get some rye growing up there over the winter. That's the plan. We hope we can get a stand. And then uh, just no-till soybeans in the next spring, right? Yeah, and it'll be about this tall and. Okay. Well, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully not too big. Yeah. So then this thing just you just drop the rye right into. Yeah, there's some in there. Spins. If you want to look in it. Yeah, it I don't know. A lot like wheat. Yeah, there's one. It looks like it looks a lot like a wheat seed, and it grows a lot like a wheat seed. But then you kill it with the Roundup in the spring, right? Yeah, pre-plant mix of herbicides. Yeah. I'll let you get going. You got to go get a truck, don't you? Yeah. Got beans to cut. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it's been a lot of fun for me to share some of our farm experiences and things with you. And uh, you keep watching. We'll have more of these. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. The landowner has one of these little Brindley plows. That's nice. It's in good shape, too. It's a little rusty. But uh, it's got the cutter and the gauge wheel.